I've been a nurse, I've been in wards. So I've seen uh, women who've had infections because they lack something, uh, I mean, uh, an hygienic way of handling their periods, you know. So that is one of them. Second, I've seen girls in my community who are socially isolated. They stay completely isolated from other peers or other colleagues for even three to five days during the time when they're administrating. They sit under the sun, uh, under trees, uh, by their own because a community uh, does not allow that to, to mingle with others when you're on periods because of course you can't have something to 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 clothe yourself with and again culture has put it that you don't cross for example water pant like uh, rivers when you're on periods so everyone knows that this girl is on periods and you're just socially isolated growing up also I've, I've faced the same challenge as a, as a woman growing in that facet, in that environment so I will not really want to have a girl go through the same first uh, sexual reproductive health is a, is a topic that is not comfortable especially to pastoral or uh, to marginalized counties let me say so yeah, so because actually it's a patriarchal society, so and that has been a tool where I think to demean, demean women, uh, I mean, so that women are not confident, comfortable to share about themselves. So engaging or, or, or uh, challenging that biasness, that bias culture of, of, the, of, of the society has been a real challenge to us, but I'm happy that we are heading there because we're in, engaging in community dialogue forums. In, in, and even use of uh, social media, you know, radio stations, using the local radio stations, where with the, uh, the local dialect we can talk and talk so that people are now getting to use it. Another challenge that we are really facing, um, we as an enterprise, we are now, this is a, 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 an area where whereby we are selling, we are ensuring this product free to the vulnerable, poor families, you know. so financial aspect becomes a challenge because they can't afford at times to to buy this product because of their poverty level so uh we but i hope especially with the plan or the being in the incubator now with plan international and other partners they can help us in i mean cushioning our business so that we don't close up because this is a, a business that is helping people get something at the table for these young mothers that we work with and also ensuring that these affordable sanitary towels reach to the vulnerable girls. Yeah, another challenge we've been uh, getting is sometimes uh, uh, other products, you know. Now people are used to the disposable sanitary towels. So getting to penetrate it in this market <laughs> has been a great challenge, but with time I'm hoping that because these are friend, uh, environment free, uh, co so, I mean commodities that we really uh, think that this is where the world should go because we, it's, it, we need to conserve and preserve our environment. What motivates me is um, what, uh, when girls get a voice in my community because through them, especially in our first lot we started with, they proudly continue with their school and they come tell me Evelyn, thank you for what you've said us. At least we are not going to thread our, I mean, our bodies for, for, for getting these sanitary towels. And girls are comfortable. So that really inspires me and uh, gives me more energy. And uh, it tells me that now the lives I used to live, these girls are no more going to live that life. So it, it's really, it really motivates me.